Good evening and welcome to worship as we gather together this night. I am so glad to be with you. My name is Dawn Lindbergh and I am the pastor of Peace Lutheran Church in Toma. And so we welcome you this night into our sanctuary here in Toma and we're so glad that you are with us. Well, as we gather for this evening, we are going to be hearing the story of Ruth and Naomi and how God was with them through the difficult times of their life and how we are reminded that in our own lives, we do not need to go it alone. And so that makes us resilient, knowing God's presence with us in our life. As you begin this worship time, I invite you to light a candle, to, to set your space in a way that reminds you that we are worshiping together. And so as we begin our worship, we will do a litany um, like we did last week. And with this opening litany, we'll invite you to do a couple of things. Um, we'll invite you to point to yourself, to mark yourself with the cross, and then to repeat after me as I say forever, and I will help you to do those things. So let us take a breath and let us welcome God's presence. Gather us in, O Lord, as your people. People who are grounded in faith and who understand resilience as a gift that is seen in expecting, knowing, trusting, resisting, believing, and living. And so tonight as we are gathered together, let us sing together verse four of the hymn, Gather Us In. Tonight we will have Delia Lindbergh singing that for us. reminded that centering on Christ, we are resilient. Hear these words and the assurance that God is with us. God is in us. Perhaps we do not remember it as loving arms held us and water of new belonging splashed over us. Each Ash Wednesday, we see the sign again revealed. We had forgotten it on ourselves. We had neglected to see it on others. But it persists, that sign, that cross, a smudge of mortality, a nudge of remembrance, a remembrance of water poured, a remembrance of anointing, a remembrance of a way made straight for God. You have been sealed with the cross forever, forever. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Amen. At this time, we hear our reading for tonight from Ruth. A reading from Ruth, chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Kilian. 
They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. When they had lived there about ten years, both Malan and Kilian also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. So they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Then she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I really like Naomi and Ruth. They're average everyday women just trying to make it through life. And like many of us, they have been dealt a hand that includes loss, loneliness, and feelings of unworthiness. Life is not at all what they expected it to be. And yet, they are resilient. Perhaps why I like this story so much is it doesn't feel so unlike my own. After college, I went to China for two years as a missionary. I was teaching English to college students. And even though it's been almost 20 years now, I still remember my first week there. My teaching partner, had not yet returned to our city as she was taking some vacation um, in, with her family in the United States again. And so here I was, 22 years old, in a city of over 700,000 people and not one person who spoke native English. I remember receiving a phone call from my family shortly af after I had arrived in my new home. They were having a family get together, and so they thought they'd give me a call. And I don't remember what they said, not one bit. But I do remember how I felt. I felt alone. I was alone in this country where no one understood me when I went to the grocery store. I was alone in this country where I looked different and I acted different, and everybody noticed that I was different. I was alone. Now I can only imagine how it felt for Naomi when she and her family knew, moved to a new land. She had hopes of finding food and stability. She had hopes for a bright new future when all of a sudden her husband and then both of her sons we're dead. And all she has left are two daughter-in-laws, 
when she realizes she can't even provide for them. How alone she must have felt as she released them saying, go back, go back each of you to your mother's home. I have nothing left to give you. How often has this been our own reality this past year? We have nothing left to give. We feel lost, we feel lonely, we feel unworthy. Because we are worn down and worn out by the realities of life. We are Naomi. Now Orpah follows Naomi's advice returning home, but Ruth, Ruth's response is a bit different. With what might be some of the most powerful words of the Old Testament, Ruth says to Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Ruth says to Naomi, you do not have to go it alone. Naomi has come to a place where she doubted everything about herself. She doubted herself so much that she didn't even feel worthy of her daughter-in-law's presence. As I stood in my own apartment in China, knowing that I needed to buy toilet paper, it was no longer optional. I decided I needed to head out the door. I had to go. But I too was filled with doubt. Had I made a mistake in going to China? Was I really cut out to live in this city without even knowing the language? Had God made a mistake when I felt called to China? Had God made a mistake? Incredible doubt. Our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, once talked about doubt in an interview, and she said, God has this. And if I'm having doubt, it doesn't mean that God is having doubt about me or the world. There are some things, there are some things we need to doubt so that we can come to a greater faith. I think that doubt is just an intensifying of one's relationship with God. She said, we need to doubt so that we can come to a greater faith. Doubt is just an intensifying of one's relationship with God. How beautiful are these words. Doubt doesn't push us away, but it actually draws us closer to God. It draws us closer to ask questions and be curious, to listen and open ourselves to the unknown. Doubt allows for growth and change. But certainty, certainty leaves us standing in one place. And yet for many, the emptiness, unworthiness, the despair continues on. And it is hard. It is so hard to see through when you're in the midst of it. It's hard to find hope when life feels so hopeless. Bishop Eaton also shared, there are so many other brothers and sisters who walk with me and carry me when I'm going through those times. We have brothers and sisters carrying us when we go through the hard times. God provides us with Ruth. Ruth who walk the journey with us, who cling to us even when it's hard. And this isn't just about being a nice person and being nice. This is God's steadfast love. And to recognize God's steadfast love is to be resilient. 
Because resilience is knowing that you do not have to go it alone. And even when we can't see it, even when we don't want to accept it, even when we push away, God is with us. In the midst of the incredible loss we have experienced this past year, we must remember that even in loss, we are not left without. Benedictine nun, Joan Chittister, she once wrote, and yet loss once reckoned, once absorbed, is a precious gift. No, I cannot be what I was before, but I can be. I must be something new. There is more of God in me I discover in emptiness than I have ever known in what I once took to be fullness. When we feel lost, alone or unworthy, when our lives feel empty, God enters in. God enters our emptiness with the roots of our lives so that we might know we are not alone. After about a month in my new home, I had a friend come to visit. And it was so good to see this friend and someone who actually spoke English. We were walking back to my apartment after dinner one night when I spotted some students who were playing basketball. I made the, the comment to my friend that it would be fun to play ball again. And being the person that she was, she walked up to them and asked if I could play. I never would have done this. I never would have walked up to them, and, but yet that night I met about five English students that would become some of my best friends in China. People who reminded me daily that I would not have to go it alone. Sometimes, sometimes we just need to open our eyes to see the roots of our lives. And when we see Ruth, we see Jesus. We see the Holy Spirit. We know that God is walking alongside of us. We are not alone. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we respond to God's word, let us sing together, I want Jesus to walk with me.
And so let us pray together using the words of Watch, O Lord, by Marty Haugen. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Tend your ailing ones. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying ones. Your suffering ones, your love, Lord. heal afflicted ones, in your love, Lord. shield your joyous ones, in your love, Your grieving ones, raise your fallen ones, mend your broken ones, watch Guard your little ones, and your love, Lord. guide your searching ones, and your love, Lord. grant us all your peace, and your love, Lord, watch your Lord with all those awake this night. Watch your Lord with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. And so let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, as we go on our way this evening, I invite you to hear these words of blessing from 1 Peter. Beloved, this suffering won't last forever. Our generous God has great plans for us in Christ. Our God will Strengthen within us what is needed to go forth in confidence and with resilience.
to share the good news, and to act for justice in the world. In the name of the God, the creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Amen. I hope that you have a blessed night and that you, as you go, are resilient. Bye-bye.